As we enter 2016, we realize that while the stage is set for more and more cryptocurrencies and digital assets, Bitcoin is still making the most noise. The first ever riff in the Bitcoin community became evident as a closed door meeting of Bitcoin developers, miners and some businesses held in Hong Kong announced the plan to introduce segregated witnesses into the protocol and then also increase the block size to 2 or 4 MB later on as needed. Now this meeting was held behind closed doors with 30 people. While the people at the meeting made the announcement, the Bitcoin community members denounced the meeting as it represented only a handful people. So that is where the rift started and then eventually we will see Bitcoin splitting into Bitcoin Cash and then Bitcoin Cash also splitting into Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. But that is later. But you know, despite this rift, businesses around Bitcoin were increasing. In April 2016, Open Bazaar, a decentralized marketplace, is released in the general public. In the same month, even the gaming giant Steam announced that they will start accepting Bitcoin as payments for games. However, Steam would later on drop Bitcoin as a payment option in 2017 because the transaction costs were going upwards of double digit dollars. I think at one point it was about $50 for one transaction of Bitcoin. A month later, Australian computer scientist Craig Wright announces that he is Satoshi Nakamoto in a blog post. Well, this claim was later dismissed by the Bitcoin community and is still being disputed. Well, in July 2016, the second Bitcoin halving happened. Block reward was now reduced from 25 BTC per block to 12.5 BTC per block. This would actually be the catalyst to the pump that comes in 2017. A month later in August, Bitfinex, one of the biggest exchanges uh, in cryptocurrency, announces that they lost 119,750 Bitcoins in a hack. But on the other hand, Uber in Argentina was accepting Bitcoin in September. So there was good news. There was adoption. Swiss Railway started accepting Bitcoin and a Swiss PC magazine called Steam started accepting Bitcoin for payments. You know, another blockchain project named Steam, but this time it is S-T-E-E-M, also launched in 2016. It started rewarding users for blogging, commenting and upvoting articles on the platform. Basically, the engaging users were earning Steam cryptocurrency for their engagement. Well, this proved that, you know, an open source distribution system works, even if it's about content or anything. And this was a new use case for blockchain and cryptocurrencies as well. By the end of 2016, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin and one more currency like Dash became the most elite of the elite cryptocurrencies. The order was sort of set now, but there was one update of Ethereum from 2016 that we can not discount. A cryptocurrency project called the DAO or DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization ran its crowd sale on Ethereum blockchain. The DAO raised over $100 million in Ether and all of them were kept in one address. Big mistake. There were concerns over the vulnerability in the code and while they were trying to fix it, some hacker was smart enough to be able to extract over $3 million worth of Ether to another child project named Child DAO that looked exactly like the DAO itself. Now at the time, the DAO actually contained roughly 15% of all of Ether in circulation. So a failure of the DAO has a negative impact on the Ethereum network and its cryptocurrency altogether. A solution was required and fast. Later, when Vitalik proposed that a soft fork, a sort of like a one-time fix, should be applied so that any more Ether cannot be removed from the DAO address and sent to the hacker. But on the other hand, the hacker threatened to take legal action as it was his or her work to do that. The argument was that a smart contract should not be allowed to be appended later. This is against the principles of decentralization. The community was split again. However, later a hard fork was proposed. Now, we want to tell you that a soft fork is where, you know, the chain remains the same, but a hard fork is where the chain splits and there are two coins afterwards. So the hard fork that was proposed uh, said that we should return all of the Ethereum to the contributors of the DAO and DAO should be ended altogether. The community was split again. The fork happened. The original ledger became Ethereum Classic and the new forked chain became what we know today as Ether and it is one of the most prominent chains right now in the blockchain space.
Now let's move on to 2017, which was one hell of a ride for cryptocurrencies. I want to remind you guys that 2016, 17, 18 and 19 were the years when most of the development was happening in this space. We cannot possibly bring up all the updates that happened. So we are just focusing on the major ones. Speaking about the price of Bitcoin in 2017, it hit $1,000 on January 3rd and went on to $20,000 by December 28th. There were more than 2,000 new cryptocurrencies launched just in the year 2017. The euphoria got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people to begin trading cryptocurrencies. But one of the most important updates was Bitcoin actually split in June. Bitcoin BTC and Bitcoin Cash BCH, there were two chains. After years of debating about how Bitcoin should scale, the controversy turned into action. The Bitcoin code split in two different directions, one direction supporting the optimization of Bitcoin blocks through SegWit or segregated witnesses, while the other direction supporting bigger blocks of up to 8 MB. BCH would later go on to have block sizes up to 32 MB and now are proposing block sizes up to 128 MB. Well, China started banning ICOs in September 2017. The market did plummet on that news and eventually China started banning cryptocurrency exchanges and shutting down the ones that were already existing. You know, even South Korea wants to ban crypto exchanges around the same time. But in India, exchanges are on the rise. By the end of 2017, India has over a dozen cryptocurrency exchanges. World's largest exchange Binance actually launched in 2017 and it went on to become the top exchange in just less than three months after launch. October 13th was when Bitcoin actually hit the milestone number of $5,000. 2017 also witnessed another hard fork on the Bitcoin network. It was Bitcoin Gold. And you know what? Besides the hard forks, billions of dollars were also invested in ICOs. In ICOs like EOS and Tron were able to raise funds in the 2017 by launching their ICOs on the platform called Ethereum. We all know now that they are the rivals to Ethereum. You know, and not just blockchain, there were newer technologies in the decentralized ecosystem. There was Tangle that was launched by IOTA and then there was the Hashgraphs, which is another distributed ledger technology using asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance to protect the network from attacks. All these new technological developments were happening, but at the same time, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were also in the bad eye of the regulators. SEC started rejecting multiple applications for exchange traded funds or ETFs. However, CBOE and CME launched Bitcoin futures in the same year, which were responsible for the pump of December 2017. Basically, 2017 is when everything pumped actually, not just Bitcoin, but with projects such as EOS, Tron, Bitcoin Cash, Zilliqa, OneChain trying to solve the issues of scalability and interoperability, 2018 was all set for blockchain 3.0. If 2017 was the year of the ICO, 2018 was probably the year of stable coins. Besides Tether that launched in 2014, in 2018, the crypto market saw tens of new stable coins such as TUSD, MakerDAI, PaxCoin, Gemini Coin, and many more. A stable coin is when the value of the cryptocurrency remains stable or rather pegged to a certain fiat currency. In this case, it was the US dollar. Do you know, however, more bad news plagued the ecosystem as CoinCheck, a Japanese exchange, is hacked on January 26th for 500 million NEM tokens and 123 million XRP. Online platforms like Facebook, Twitter and Google also started banning crypto project related ads. But the best story and possibly my favorite story is about the rapper 50 Cent. You know, for his album Animal Ambition in 2014, 50 Cent accepted Bitcoin in payments. He was able to avoid bankruptcy in January 2018 because of those Bitcoins. Back at home in India, in April, the Reserve Bank of India placed a ban on banks and other regulated entities from supporting any business or individuals dealing in cryptocurrencies effective from July 5th. Also back at home, CoinSecure lost 434 bitcoins in a hack in April. To fight the RBI ban, some of the exchanges went to the Supreme Court. The case is still in hearing one year on. 
But over 40 new exchanges were opened in 2018 despite all these hardships. 2018 also saw a significant drop in Ethereum's use as well as price. Developers began moving to rival platforms Tron and EOS for building dApps. In November 2018, a chain split occurred in the Bitcoin Cash chain, splitting into BCH ABC, the proposed changes by Bitcoin ABC, and Craig Wright and N Chain Satoshi's vision or BCH SV. You know, Craig Wright threatened a hash war which led to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies crashing double digit percentages. In November, Bitcoin fell from $6,000 to almost $3,500. As price crashed, the mining became less profitable, miners shut down operations, which in turn reduced the Bitcoin mining difficulty in December by a sharp steep, something that was not seen since 2015. By the end of 2018, it became evident that the crypto winter, as people have dubbed it, would last a lot longer, but the development in the space was only rising. Multiple news broke out over institutions entering into cryptocurrency market as well, such as Fidelity launching its own institutional cryptocurrency platform. But all in all, Bitcoin actually turned 10 on 31st October 2018. We all celebrated Bitcoin's 10th birthday. Even the people who have now stopped using Bitcoins or moved on to other platforms. Moving on to 2019, we are only a quarter into 2019 and the only major update from the crypto ecosystem is the launch of initial exchange offerings. Starting with BitTorrent, Binance set a new kind of investment channel in motion as now multiple large exchanges begin launching their own IEOs. These major exchanges are now offering a token sale event for new blockchain projects looking to crowdsource funds. Similar to when in 2017 ICOs were being launched to crowdsource their development funds. We are also seeing that 2019 is setting stage for security tokens offering. As part of blockchain 3.0, companies are building solutions for non-fungible assets as well, like land and vehicles. Supply chain is seeing a lot of blockchain movement, so is banking and other financial markets. I want to leave you now with a thought. Think about the possible use cases of blockchain and the projects that may launch in 2019, 2020 and so on. Once again, I am Naimish, founder of CoinCrunch India and you can follow me on Twitter or join our group on Telegram at the links given below.